joining us live is Christina Aonodis. She is a health coach for women, the founder of Top of Her Game. And we're talking about how, as women, our bodies change, our hormones are forever shifting, and we're always trying to navigate these changes. It can be hugely daunting. However, if you don't empower yourself with the knowledge and education about what your body is going through, there can be some really significant health issues. Um, lack of knowledge, big problem, Christina. I think stigma is a, a big barrier that you must be overcoming all the time to try and educate women about what's happening in their own bodies. Tell us a little bit about you and how you became a health coach. Well, listen, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Um, the reason why I actually became a health coach as part of my portfolio of um, uh, in my career, if you like, because I am a professional trainer, facilitator and consultant is because I actually went through a seriously dark time in my what's called perimenopause which I know we're going to talk about mm -hmm. in, in a few moments and I learned so much about what the stigmas are for women and the and the lack of information that we have mm -hmm. and that's what kind of threw me into this whole path of trying to get women to really understand what they're going through and they're not going crazy. Well this is the thing and it's so frequently diminished as oh it's you know menopause is just a hot flush or oh you're getting a bit batty as you get older and unfortunately some of the symptoms are really really significant can you tell us a little bit about what you went through sure so i went so i'm talking about two there's two phases that i think we should distinguish one is perimenopause and one is menopause most women are completely unaware that there's a phase before you actually stop having menzies which is called perimenopause which and is before the menopause and how long does that last oh honey this can last anything between th from the age of 35 3 to 50 so it could be this absolutely 15 years of absolute mayhem what what happens is essentially our, our ovaries are dying right just to put it bluntly and so our hormones from because our, our hormones are actually manufactured in a very complex way our hormones start going up and down and and completely um, imbalanced. Mm -hmm. So we have three main hormones, which are um, uh, progesterone, estrogen, and and testosterone. Yes, women have testosterone, which and is we another need myth. it, <laughs> and we need it. Very, very important. So part of what happens is progesterone drops when we start perimenopause, and this tends to happen between, as I said, the ages. Mostly, it's the ages of 40 to 50, but some women get it much earlier. Mm -hmm. At 50, what tends to happen? Plus, we go through the phase of menopause which is when we stop having menzies completely and we normally define this as if you've had a year without a period exactly that's it's pretty definitive pretty definitive but however menopause menopause can take up to 10 15 years so great so this is when <laughs> this is when this is where we have a challenge if you think about it we're looking at a you know 30 years of where you are up and down mm -hmm. constantly confused as to what your body is doing and your mm -hmm. body reacts in very very different ways and that's why I, and that's why I become such a big proponent of educating women because no two women are the same exactly some some women might breeze through it some women might be like oh I actually haven't had a period for a year and I'm, I'm kind of through what should be the worst of it Others, which unfortunately is all too common and all too unrecognized, is physical changes, which we can touch on, but also a huge amount around mental health, whether that is anxiety, brain fog, loss of identity. Um, it's It can be really debilitating for an awful lot of people. Tell us about your own experience, Christina. So my experience was, and, and there's seven realms that I want to touch upon, so we'll come to you, those. You make it, that, that, that makes it sound magical. The <laughs> seven realms. I'm guessing it's not too magical. Well, it's not magical, but hey, there are ways to dealing with it. So maybe <laughs> okay. there is magic in that. I hope so. <laughs> so my story was that I actually, in my mid-40s, went through a serious amount of anxiety, depression, kind of losing myself and I actually one of the most important things that really happened to me was I developed what's called skin tags and I thought that's you know bizarre but you know I'll live with it and went to the dermatologist had them removed but actually what I realized fast forward a few years is I was actually becoming pre-diabetic I had an issue in losing weight I had terrible amounts of inflammation in my body and my knees were killing me. And I thought, you know what? It's age. You know, we're not supposed to do certain things after a certain time. Mm. But fast forward till today, I am much better. And I've just turned 50. You look Helen, look got to awesome. tell you. And I'm better at 50 than I was at 45. That shows you that there's stuff that you can do that can make you feel better, even if you're older in inverted commas. I think for, for many people, it takes a 
a lot of courage to go to a doctor about it and unfortunately we're going to doctors who haven't got a huge amount of knowledge about it. Do you feel like there's a bit of an education gap there? Look, the challenge is not just the education gap, gap is that because we're complex as beings, we got to love women. We love, we're much more complex and sophisticated, <laughs> right? That's how I like to see it, the positive side. I like that. But um, w- it, the reality is we need a, an array of physicians to work with us. Mm-hmm. So it's gynecologist, it's, it's endocrinologists, it's, it's obviously people like um, your, your, your gut because it's very important, um, enterologists. So we're looking at very different, distinct specialisms, which is one of the reasons why women kind of fall through the cracks. Mm-hmm. And there's why this is why people like me who are health coaches exist. Yeah. Because what we do is we actually help women think about what could be the strategies they need to be considering, and they then need to go and speak to their physician about it and work. we work with them. Christina, can I ask then, if perimenopause and menopause symptoms aren't recognised managed well what can that lead to well listen one of the biggest challenges is when what happens and this is globally the data shows that one of the biggest issues with perimenopausal um, symptoms is because your hormones are out of whack and i'm talking sex hormones when your estrogen is out of whack you also have a higher tendency of having what's called insulin resistance which is being Mm pre-diabetic. That leads to a whole host of illnesses. Uh, Potentially could be, uh, it it makes it more likely that women get Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's called diabetes 3, for those who don't know. Alzheimer's, there is now increasingly um, research to prove that uh, managing insulin for women can reduce Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Now, women are more, are twice as likely as men to get Alzheimer's. And that's why it's a big issue for us. The other issue is osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is when the thinning of the, bl- of the bone density. And we've got to do particular types of exercise in order to maintain bone density. So, so it's not enough to have calcium. No, you've got to be doing your load-bearing, weight resistance. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You mentioned insulin, which is one of the, the you know, one of this group of hormones that actually are really crucial during this stage other two being cortisol and um, oxytocin as well now cortisol i think of as being a stress hormone yeah. which is the one that can and we get this we hear about this a lot this kind of middle age spread and it can help you can be really helpful in helping you gain weight around your tummy mm-hmm. which i think a lot of women in their 40s 50s 60s i mean you know, experience and my mum curses it frequently um, what about the role of oxytocin which is, is it more of a happy one, I hope? So oxytocin is, is defined as the bonding hormone. Oxytocin is actually the balancer to cortisol. So there's two things that we need to do, consider. We need to lower our insulin levels, which I mentioned things like one of the strategies is doing time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting mm-hmm. that is proving to lower insulin levels. Um, the second one is when you're thinking about cortisol, what we need to do, uh, sorry, uh, oxytocin, we need to consider things that make us feel good. You know, even stroking a cat, uh, hugging your children, dancing around the kitchen like no one's watching. These are the things that help us increase oxytocin mm-hmm. and help reduce the level of cortisol. Now, we're not going to get rid of cortisol completely because it is an innate hormone that we need to function. So mm-hmm. cortisol isn't the bad guy in the equation. Mm-hmm. However, because we are in the, in, the, in the mid-40s, what tends to happen is we are uh, challenged because we're kind of the sandwich generation. We have caring responsibilities, both children, elderly parents. We're in the peak of our careers. Yeah, it's a really cruel irony. It's, yes. So we're supposed to be at our best, but actually our body starts fighting us. And this is why we need to really start understanding how we can help our body let's talk about that let's talk some strategies before um, I also want to hear about some of the weird symptoms that you experience as well because when you google perimenopause symptoms it's like a dictionary it's 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 a never-ending list and you're like oh crikey here we go what was it for you that and something that perhaps blindsided you a bit Christina well listen it wasn't my personal in uh, my personal uh, symptom but there's up to 37 different symptoms that women can go into through in perimenopause one of them which is the most interesting is burning tongue sensation so there's women who actually have the sensation of their tongue burning <gasps> Um, now, you imagine taking that to the doctor, right, and saying, look, my tongue feels like it's burning. 
the first response is going to be like, are you sure you don't need something strong? <laughs> <laughs> I have a psychiatry colleague who can absolutely, talk to you. Absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, and this is where the education piece comes, mm -hmm. comes to play because we need to be able to have these conversations. And I mentioned the seven realms, and I hope we can touch upon those. Let's do it. Um, because there are so many things that we can do when we feel that something isn't right. And that's one number strategy number one overall if you know something's not right speak to someone like myself who know a little bit more about women's challenges mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. um, but looking at the looking at the seven realms that I mentioned number one we touched upon, upon the hormone hierarchy um, where the, our, gen, our sex hormones are actually impacted by insulin and cortisol and we need to find ways to manage that and increase oxytocin. So that's not the first realm. The second one you mentioned is the weight gain. Mm -hmm. If you have unexplained weight gain, particularly around the waist, abdominal fat or visceral fat as it's called is actually uh, active in, an, in a negative way for women. So the more we actually pile it on, the more estrogen receptors it has and it actually makes things worse. We become estrogen dominant. Okay which is a, a further problem for us because that increases the, list, the risk of PCOS, of loads of conditions that we, sh we have to be aware of. The third area is the, is, the, is the mental health. So if we're feeling depressed, if we're feeling low, anxious, these things really hit our confidence levels. And what we then tend to do, so we, if we're feeling that, then we have to really think about why am I feeling um, this way? And, and I'm going to kind of, one of the strategies I'm going to talk about um, as a seventh realm is the metabolic one. So I'll come back to how that could help um, the mental side of things. But the social aspect, which is the fourth realm, is critical. We shouldn't isolate. Mm -hmm. Women need to have conversations with other women. We also need to, because it has been shown by research, by the way, that the more conversations that women have, the more they have their, their tribe, it's like the equivalent of going to the gym. Oh, <laughs> sign me up. I'd rather have a chat than do a push-up. Uh, Thanks well, very much. Although, okay, maybe both. Fine. We need we need load bearing. <laughs> remember that. Um, then the, the 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 other realm is the environmental. Um, the I'm sorry, the emotional, and that's where we've got the issue around stress, which we talked about. And here we need to make sure that we are doing everything we can to manage our stress levels and lowering, lowering our uh, cortisol. Um, but one of the things, the next one is the environmental. And I think that's one of the least spoken. Mm -hmm. Why do I say this? Is because our environment is full of toxins. Now, everyone likes nail varnish. That's toxic for our body. I'm wiggling my bare fingers at you right now. Same here. But don't look at my toes. <laughs> Same here. So the other, the other um, uh, toxins could include wearing man-made fabrics. What about things like um, household chemicals and cleaning products? Absolutely. Okay. And eating out of plastic mm -hmm. containers and putting food that's hot in plastic containers that releases the PFAs. And so we've got, real, we've got to cleanse our environment as well. And finally, and this is very important because it has now come out of research, this is hot stuff, is the metabolic wellness that we need to consider. And here's the role of the microbiome. Now that's the gut bacteria, there's little gut bacteria, there's bacteria that we've got bacteria in our, in our guts that help us digest. So it's good bacteria. And, and, it's and, good and bacteria. we're seeing more and more connection between mental health, that mind-gut connection. There we go. So this is why I said to you, with a mental health piece, we need to make sure that we're helping the bacteria replicate but also maintain it and what do we need here we need to because by the way microbiome is helps in the production of hormones mm -hmm. okay so we need to have a healthy microbiome how do we do that we consume prebiotics you know garlic asparagus lots of anti-inflammatory stuff lots of uh, these are anti-inflammatory foods and at the same time we also consume probiotics so kefir uh, Libne, which is very very common here these are they help us refuel build more cultures I just want to come to the text line, Christine, because we're going to run out of time, but I want to get to this matter saying, how does a woman know their insulin levels are wrong? Oh, Good question. A fantastic question. So the first thing is think, of, think about what are the, the... So in my case, I said I had skin tags. The second uh, issue I, that I see very commonly is this inability to lose weight. 
if you're putting on weight and you're losing, you're, you're having a hard time losing it, have a look at what are your insulin levels because that could be an indicator. So those are the two kind of big ones. Mm-hmm. Um, a message from Sandra saying, my daughter 11 has been, quote unquote, diagnosed with insulin resistance. School meals are, school meals are a nightmare. Schools need to have healthier diets and options and schools need to educate children and help them on their journeys. I would agree, especially in this part of the world when you know it's so, so prevalent. Absolutely. Child obesity and diabetes levels have gone up through the roof, particularly in this region. So you're absolutely right. Um, we have run out of time, but I wanted to perhaps ask you to share your details for anyone that's listening going, oh, OK, I, I, I need some Christina in my life. What's the best way of getting in touch with you? Well, if, if they can pronounce my surname, which is Ioannidis. I'm trying. It's Christina <laughs> Ioannidis underscore official on, on Instagram. It's also the same URL on uh, on. On, on what do you call it on the on um, it's online as well online thank you That's if, if you word. do want the details I'll ha- I've got the link in front of me if you just want to send me the word woman I will send you Christina's details we'd love to have you back and discuss this further I think there's an awful lot of very actionable points that women can really grasp hold of and make a very positive change to how they're feeling um, what they're thinking during um, during an inevitable time in our lives but it's great to have people like you kind of holding our hands and guiding the way. Thank and you so much. Thank you for also facilitating the conversation. Any time. I'll see you back in our studio next time. Won't be by the pool, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Love it, though. <laughs> <laughs> if you want Christina Cecil, send me a message just saying, woman, as you said, there is a health coach, um, and you can find her online and on Instagram. She's also the founder of Top of Her Game. <laughs> <laughs>